Sports, in association with the PGA Tour, is delighted to present the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today's coverage of the Farmers Insurance Open is about to begin. Pleased you could join us for this first round action. I'm Luke Elvey alongside Rich Beam in the booth and out on the course following our feature group is the delightful Henny Koyak. Hello Henny. Hi Luke, I'm very happy to be following this particular featured group because there are rumours of quite the rivalry starting to bubble between these two players. So it looks like they aim to beat Justin Thomas. Should add a bit of extra excitement to our coverage today Henny. Oh, that goes without saying, Luke, but Justin Thomas will not be easy to beat. I don't think there's a more competitive man out there on tour. No, you're absolutely right there. He's a complete player. It will certainly be interesting to keep an eye on this rivalry throughout the event. And playing this one from around 120 yards out. Well, good looking shot here. That's headed towards the green. Well, that's a lovely approach and sets up a birdie opportunity here at the first. Gotta like their chances from there. I like the look of this. Well, that's a nice way to start. Riding a little red number down on the scorecard at first. Making birdie in the first always puts you in a good frame of mood. It'll be fun to watch the round progress. He's in a share of third place. The second, a short par four. One that the players like to take on these days, Rich. A good birdie look here. They do. It used to be where you laid back on top of the hill and took a wedge, nine iron sometimes for your second shot. But a lot of players now are challenging that bunker down the right hand side, getting as far down there as possible and just having a flick with a sand wedge in for their second. Wonderfully played. What's in front of them, Henny, with this part? They've just got to focus on hitting the back of the cup, guys. This is up the hill, bit of extra juice needed. Looking really good. Ooh, right by the hole. An opportunity to make a par here. In she goes. Let's head to the next. Currently one under for the event. There are so many stunning golf holes on this entire property. And this third, the par three downhill, certainly one of the elite holes on the course. It might be stunning to look at, but it is painful. Can be extremely painful to play downhill all the way when they tuck the pin over on the left hand side forget about it never hit it there only when the pin is in the center or the right part of the green should you be taking dead aim other than that center of the green all day long putting for birdie here Now that's how you roll the rock. Yeah, nice mid-range birdie putt, that one. And this effort by Justin Thomas. Had a big eagle on the last hole. Never seen a scorecard that doesn't look good with a two on it. Come on, ball. Come on. Just didn't drop. And after that effort, let's take a look at how it stands. One of the hardest holes on the entire property is the par four fourth ridge. It is a strong demanding hole right from TD Green. Very picturesque this fourth hole. Pacific Ocean directly to the golfer's left hand side. Don't be sucked in the, by the views. However, you'd want no part of that. 
and you certainly don't want any part of that fairway bunker down the right hand side either find the fairway and you've got a good chance at knocking it on this green in two be wary though anything long and left on this green is no good justin thomas major champion world number one player really has all the attributes doesn't he rich he does his focus on the, his own game is is amazing I, I think that this kid really understands how to play the game he's got all the shots but he doesn't try and get up there and hit it as hard as he can every single time he gets out there and he learns how to play the game hit the finesse shots when you need it take some risks when you have when you need to but also back off when you don't need to this kid is a real deal complete game from head to toe and this putt coming up for his par nice little putt to hold that one this guy is putting the lights out of it this week. Our leader is a couple of shots up at this stage. There's a real premium on your tee shots here at Torrey Pine South Course, keeping ball in fairways critical. And that is illustrated also by the par four fifth. This fairway cambers from left to right, which helps a fade on this hole. However, don't get too overzealous and pull it because that fairway bunker down the left, that sees a lot of action. Second shot is a green that pitches back toward you from back to front. That's got a lot of movement over on the left-hand side. And this shot from about 150 yards out. Only two shots off the pace. Yeah, well played. And this part to move into a tie for first. Now that's a good part to hold any day of the week. And that will take him to three under. Now let's switch our focus to Justin Thomas. Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? Oh, that one just missed the hole. And after that effort, that's how it looks. Rich, there are a number of strong holes on this outward half, but the par five sixth, the players are definitely thinking birdie here, but it's all set up by the tee shot. It's a nice reprieve, this par five. Just a little bit dog leg from left to right. Keep it shy of those fairway bunkers down the left-hand side, and almost every player will give it a go in two. This is a three-tiered green with a low area over on the left-hand side that sees a lot of action. After a very consistent run of play over the last half a dozen starts or so, Rich, this player's coming with a whole heap of confidence, and they look to me to be one of the players to beat. Do you agree? We've seen this player time and time again contend for tournaments, and it is no surprise to see him doing it once again this week. It is so fun watching this player. They're in top form. Not bad. A good opportunity here, just six feet to the hole. All right, guys, this for two birdies in a row. Ooh, nice line. You can mark it down. That's birdie number four today. Back to back birdies moving the right direction there, Luke. Still in the lead now after that hole. The par four seventh, a little dog leg left to right. Again, positioning of the tee is key. This fairway slopes pretty good from left to right. Players want to start it out at the fairway bunker down the left-hand side and just hit a gentle fade off of that. Second shot here is to an elevated green. Don't go long whatsoever here. That's when the Barranca and the Canyons come into play. And Henny, what's he looking at here? 
setting up here from about 150 yards. Chosen the pitchy wedge here. Let's hope this one gets a good lie because it's heading towards the rough. That's not what they were looking for. Coming up a little short with that effort. Not bad, though. Oh, I thought that one was going in. Very crafty, that shot. You better believe it is great stuff to watch. This putt for par here. And down she goes. Now let's head over and see what JT's been doing. He's currently in fourth place. Oh, wouldn't that have been nice? Let's take a look at the leaderboard as it stands. The leader now has a one-stroke advantage. We head up the hill away from the ocean here at the eighth hole, Rich. A lovely par three, but all the challenges in the green. It is. It's very wide, not very deep. Players going in there with kind of mid irons to short irons. Uphill the entire way. Difficult to get it on that back level when they stick the pin all the way on top. Well, well played. 16 feet to the hole. Little birdie look in here. What a putt, started this perfectly. And another one goes. And with it, an increase of his lead. And with that, he'll move to five under par. And just keeping it in neutral on the leaderboard. The par five ninth is a monster over 600 yards rich. Challenging to say the least. I think the challenging part about it, Luke, is it's just straight away. You have to hit a straight tee shot, a straight second shot, and a straight third shot to find the green in three. It really is just that simple and straightforward. The green does have two tiers on it, but for the most part, Luke, it's an inviting third shot. Rich, we know these days with the PJ Tour and the wraparound schedule, uh, the tour begins in the fall, but really it's felt at the start of any new year that every time you come to Torrey Pines, the big stars come out to play. It feels like the authentic start to the season. It certainly does that. And I think that the big name players, the accomplished players, love coming here to Torrey Pines because it's going to give them a gauge of exactly where their game is at and what they need to work on. Because you can't go around either the north or the south course and geek it around. You have to be on your game. You have to drive the ball well. Your iron play has to be spot on, and your short game better be sharp, because if not, you're going to shoot a million. Both of these golf courses are very challenging, but they're fair, and I think that's what the players love about it. If you're in a good zone mentally and everything is going well physically, you can produce a 64 or 65, but if you're hitting it poorly and you're not thinking squarely, I'm telling you what, 77s and 78s come into the equation real quick. Yeah, nicely hold. That's a good fight back. That's a really good effort to get it up and down out of that bunker for the birdie. Good job. Trying to get it to four under with this putt. Looking for another birdie here. Was that a good line? Let's take a look at the current standings. So, Rich, it looks like a nice start to the rivalry by this player after nine holes. Your thoughts? Luke, so far so good against their rival, but let's face it, only nine holes has happened. There's still a long way between now and the end of the tournament. As we head to the back nine here at Torrey Pines Southridge, the 10th isn't a long hole, but the slope off the tee makes it a, a difficult one. It is. It cambers pretty good from left to right, so most players are going to take something less than driver, probably a three wood or a five wood, and try and hit a draw into that bank to slow the golf ball down. You find the fairway, 
The green sits slightly above you, but the difficult part about it is it's got three different sections, a front, a back left, and a back right. You gotta get your second shot spot on to have the best opportunity for birdie. This one is right down the pipe. And this effort by Justin Thomas. He's currently in fifth place. Sitting at two under par. Tied for fifth. This one looks to be heading towards the green. Pay attention, folks. That's how you play golf. OK, let's get back to the action. Six feet remaining to the cup. That'll play, and that will take him to seven under. Glancing at the scoreboard, and they're currently sitting in first place. Lexi Thompson holds second. There aren't too many easy holes here at Torrey Pine South, but the course certainly gets tougher as we head to the par 3 11th. This green from the back tee looks minuscule. There's just not a lot of room on the front of it. Even the back section, which it does get a little bit wider, it still is very small. A massive shelf, top left. If you get it up there, happy days for you. If not, just find the green, two putt, make three, move on. Now let's switch our focus to Justin Thomas. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. Let's return to live play now. All right, Henny. What's he got in front of him here with this putt? I've been all around this, tried to read it, just can't see it, but he's got about 22 feet. Wonderful part, and that puts some real pressure on their rival now. Currently three strokes up after that hole. We head to the 12th hole. This par four is as big and as strong and as tough as you find anywhere on the PGA Tour. This is about as tough a hole as you're going to find anywhere on the planet. Prevailing wind coming right back into the players. You just have to step up and hit a solid tee shot to find the fairway from there. You're going in with a mid to long iron, sometimes even a hybrid to a green that sits just above you. Not a ton of movement, but enough from back right to front left to make you think. And hitting yet another green here today. Another green in regulation. This is an absolute clinic. Butting for birdie. And down it goes. And now that finds him in first place. All right, Rich, the par 5 13th, so much has been said about it. I'm interested in your thoughts. This is one of the most interesting par fives you'll ever play. If you hit a good tee shot, find the fairway, and you have the opportunity to reach, then happy days. But if you don't find the fairway or can't reach, now you've got to lay up into a low area where you're going to have a third shot that's absolutely blind. This third shot could be one of the most difficult third shots 
on the PGA Tour, bar none. And here we are with the third shot. Oh my goodness! That was bang on target. There's part of about six feet coming up. This one started out on a good line. Well done. Take the birdie. Now let's head over and see what JT's been doing. He's happy, just came off a birdie. Playing their fifth shot. Wow, what a save. And this is why you got to keep your foot on the gas at all times. These guys and girls are good. Our leader is up by a whopping six shots now. Here we have a long par four. It's going to take two great shots to get on. Coming off a birdie at the last, looking to add another one. That's tiny. Second shot here on the 14th. And this player seems to not be too intimidated having Justin Thomas in their group today. That was a fantastic shot into this green. Yep, tracking well. He just keeps putting a gap on the rest of the field. What a putt to hold. And maintaining top spot on the leaderboard after that. We stride across the 15th, Rich, and we talk about strong par fours. This is another one. As big as 12 was, Luke, this is almost twice the size, if you can imagine it, with a tiny, tiny landing area out there. This is possibly the meanest hole on this golf course. Not hardest, meanest. If you've walked off with par on this hole, job well done, my friend. No harm, no foul there with that shot. And Henny? What's he facing with this one? Yep, I've paced this. He's got around 195. They've chosen to club down here. He's found the surface. Good chance here. And this effort by Justin Thomas. Yeah, he just made bogey on that last one. Getting ready to play their third. that buries it for birdie as well and that'll be a big boost to his standings on the leaderboard and back to the play shall we here's a chance to get to 12 under this is their look at birdie oh that had eyes for it lovely shot Leading by eight strokes now after that hole. Sixteenth, the last of the par threes on this golf course, but it's not an easy one. This is underrated difficult. The green is big in size, but it plays awfully small because there's really small sections to this green. The front, the back right, and the top left. If you find the right section, Job well done. If you don't, it's going to be a difficult two-putt, to say the least. What are we looking at for this putt, Henny? This is downhill. Can't be too bold.
This is tracking right into the front of this cup. That one raced by. Bit of work coming back. Big putt for par coming up. Be the ball, Danny. No, 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 no. Well done. Currently 12 under for the round. The penultimate hole at Torrey Pines South is not a long par four, but the danger lurks everywhere. They moved this fairway to the left alongside the canyon a few years ago, which really enhanced the beauty, but also the fear of this hole. You have to challenge the left-hand side because the bunker down the right is really no good. From there, the green, it tilts from back to front, mostly with a really low section over there on the left-hand side. However, it still is a promising birdie opportunity. That's not the outcome they are after. What's well, a strange miss there. Look, they've been hitting the greens all day long. If he makes this, he'll save his par. Short game has been absolutely fantastic today. This is a good chance. Now let's switch our focus to Justin Thomas. He's currently in second place, hoping to overtake the leader. Setting up here with a very long putt. Come on, ball, don't deny him. Uh, that'll be a good result. I know it didn't go down, but it's just a tap in awaits. Our leader is currently enjoying an eight-shot advantage. Well, the finishing hole here at Torrey Pines South, one of the more famous on the PGA Tour, site of so many of Tiger's wonderful victories. Par five, you can get there in two. You can, but you have to thread your drive in between those four fairway bunkers that line the fairway. From there, now you have to think, do I want to take on this flag with the bunkers right, bunkers left, and certainly the water in front? It's a daunting second shot, but if you're brave enough to take it on, then you could reap massive rewards. Well, that's a tremendous shot and sets up a wonderful opportunity. Absolutely love watching a player be bold and be rewarded for it. And he's down there. You got a read? Yeah, they've left it in the perfect spot here, just below the hole. They can be aggressive up the hill. Okay, steady now. Yeah, that looked to be a bit of a misread. Three feet to go here to the hole. And that will do it for this player today. Well, that's a lovely way to finish the opening round. Out in front, the leader. Sounds great. They're feeling awfully good about their game, aren't they? But there's lots of golf left to play. They need to make sure they go out and continue to play in the front foot and try and get this thing done. Well, that was a thrilling day. And on behalf of myself, Luke Elvey, Rich Beam, and all the hardworking folks at 2K Sports, thanks for your company. We look forward to the next time you join us.